call for rights all the time, yelling, you, know, you got to stop uh, coercing and forcing people into treatment, but not come up with alternatives. As end of that here, we got uh, you know, this respite house. We have our advocacy, which is really a reasonable accommodation for people to be afforded an advocate to go to court with them, to treatment team meetings, any engagement that they feel they may need support with. And sometimes they just come to us and they can write the respite. Then we start adding, you know, acupuncture, Reiki, things that were really, you know, self-help groups, things that were really different in trainings. And now we're taking that campaign to the community. We've had a couple good, successful newspaper articles about what we're doing in the community with our respite house. Some big fundraisers. We have a boat cruise coming up in May, and uh, you know, we're really trying to change that, that, that prejudice and discrimination, so that it becomes a more community-focused. Uh, support it's just uh, we have family domestic situations where sometimes people just call and say I want a break and, you know it's hard because we only have two rooms uh, two bedrooms and um, sometimes we like uh, a week ago we had eight calls from Thursday to Sunday and we can only fit two people in and we try to have it as comfortable as possible these boxes, it's total their control, they pick their key. If people use medications, um, obviously we have to have them, keep them under their own secure way. So we give them locks, box, and key, and key to the house, and, you know, they can set up. Most people throw their stuff around and <laughs> make it like it's their home. Breaking bread and, and eating together, we see there's a mix of people like to cook together, which is bonding between the, person, the support person and the, and the person who's here using the support. Um, or they just want to chill and order pizza. <laughs> you can watch chicken wings and pizza, you know. There's a sharing in everything that happens here. And uh, from chilling out back and smoking a cigarette, uh, and to cleaning up and doing laundry and, and you know, making, moving things around, it, it's usually the two people together. But there are times, uh, you know, a person doesn't want to do anything, nobody has to do anything. We don't want them to use it as a crutch. We really want them to come in, use the support the best they can, and really connect to the other resources we have and the other resources you want. A few weeks ago, an example is a woman came here, and um, uh, of course I have to keep anonymity, but um, she came and said, I'm fearful that I'm going to get locked up. So we met with her peer advocates, and she says, I know you have the respite program. Uh, I need to get there. So we don't do intakes. We do odd dialogues to tell us what's going on, what can we do uh, to help. Do you think respite is actually what you, you need as a support? Tell us why and you know, what would this uh, be like? Uh, what would it divert you from having to deal with? And she shared and uh, through the advocacy and the respite piece, we were able over a four day period, um, she went in to respite through the advocacy piece, we were able to find out she had a, what's called a mental hygiene pickup order here in New York State. We call them mm. mental hygiene warrant, arrest warrants. And she was able to divert that because an advocate worked with her to call the county, find out if they have one. If there was one, we can oh, negotiate that with them. Yeah, right. uh, and at the same time, she's in a safe place, which is a respite house where she feels most comfortable and safe. My Earl. And um, through that, we were able to not have a pickup order done, and this person is now, after four days, was able to um, get a 30-day stay at an apartment building through another community resource, and now is actively uh, finding a place in the community to live. It's the change of climate in our community we're mm -hmm. seeing. Mm -hmm. As we talk more about respite, or the people who used it talk more about it, um, and the only problem is, is you need more rooms. <laughs> this is a lot cheaper. Two hundred dollars a day, uh, you know. If you have to equate money to twelve hundred or fourteen hundred dollars a day mm -hmm. for a hospital, five hundred bucks when you walk through the door at the hospital, I tell them it's a conversation with us. <laughs> <laughs>